And my name is Marquez Brownlee, uh, AKA MKBHD on the internet, and I'm a product reviewer. Hi, I'm Mark Critcher, and I'm the Chief Brand Officer of Procter & Gamble. I'm really, really excited about spending some time here and having a conversation because I think the two of us can probably make some good things happen together. <laughs> I've been looking forward to it, man. This is fun. I think we wanted to start off talking about um, just your, your challenges as a business. And I'm in the tech space, but I think there's a lot of parallels where you want to market the product and you also want to make as good of a product as possible. What do you find are like your, your biggest challenges there? Our challenge is, is that we make these everyday products that are cleaning, health, and hygiene. People use them every single day. They've got to be the absolute best. In addition to that, we also want to do good because we reach 5 billion people on the planet every day with our products and with our advertising. So we want to be a force for good as well as be a force for growth. You know, you do a, a remarkable job of, of going you know, behind products, understanding every aspect of their technology. When you do that, do you take into consideration what that company does beyond just make that awesome product? Yeah, it's interesting. It can actually be a bit of a challenge because I am so focused for me on the product that oftentimes you can be a little bit blinded by the product is so great that I'm willing to forgive shortcomings of the company behind it. Mm. Ideally, that's not a trade-off that a customer has to make. They can feel comfortable once they're picking between the best set of products for them, knowing that they can also choose one that has great people and a great message and a great purpose behind it. Again, if you're if you're a company using that great product as leverage, you don't wanna use it to leverage the wrong way. You have a great product, you can get away with bad things. You wanna use it the right way. There's a unique set of products that comes to mind when you're choosing which one you wanna use. You're also able to think about the good that you can do for your environment as a result of using the product. There's a benefit to you as a customer, you're gonna save money on your bill, but also you can help make a better positive impact as a result of using this product. Bringing that into messaging seems like a no brainer, but that's something that I think definitely will help. Well, that's interesting. Let me give you an example. Tide is an obviously great product. It's been around since the 1950s. What they've done is they've figured out a way to be able to clean clothes in cold water. It actually reduces the energy load because most of the energy for washing clothes is heating the water. So it actually reduces carbon emissions. Now, the other area that we're interested in is the quality. And we've got a long history of that. One of our core things we focus on in all of our advertising, the accurate portrayal of every person, whether it be regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, ability, religion, age. If the images you're seeing are inaccurate or stereotyped or objectified or diminished or denigrated, that's what people start seeing as reality. What are your thoughts on on that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting, actually. I, I'm in tech. It's just male dominated in every way, from the people running companies to the people building things to the people buying them from end to end. For me, I always started every video with, what's up, guys? And just that little thing, you know, you might not think too hard about it, but right off the bat, inclusion becomes something they think about when you start a video that way. So the past couple of weeks, I've started the video with just, what's up, MKBHD here. And we'll see what that changes. We'll see if I can look in the analytics and see more inclusive groups of people uh, watching the videos, but uh, it's definitely a challenge in tech. And I think there's a lot more I can do. That is such an important point. It's those very small points that make a big difference because you're, you're the, just what's up. You've just, you've now included 50% more yeah. people. Uh, what's up guys can definitely be perceived as something different. Olay is one of our brands and they've got a campaign called Face Anything. Big part of what they're doing is on gender equality, but they're actually trying to get um, more women in tech. And so they've got a program that um, where they, they actually um, help invest in uh, in uh, uh, women who code. And so, you know, maybe maybe we can maybe we can bring that. You can say, hey, what's up? And uh, show, show Olay and uh, what they're doing. A lot of what we're talking about here is the importance of building trust with the people we serve. You know, with our products, we try to make sure that people trust our brands because we we deliver what we promise. They know that they're going to get a high quality product. But you have 12 million people who are <laughs> connecting with you yeah. every day. That's amazing. So you're building trust. 
how do you do it and how, how do you and what do you think is important to make that happen well that's a good question I, I i think a lot of that comes to uh, a consistency of truth so if a device comes across my plate and i think it's great i'll say it's great if i think it's bad i also have to say it's bad my communication with the audience has evolved to where my focus has to be to be able to explain the nuances of the tech that go really deep, hmm. but to bring it to a surface level where someone who's not an expert in it can understand it. There's the real similarities in how we develop advertising. What I think it misses in many cases is a lot of the depth and the nuances. I think that YouTube is a, is a role model. We have created videos that are you know, that are sometimes three minutes that are that are epic. Most of our best, you know, most effective um, ads around around for, being a force for good are longer than 30 seconds. So people will watch it if it's engaging. That's one thing with YouTube is if there is a community for it, there is a big community for it. And so not only is there a tech community, I'm sure there's like a paper towel efficiency community yeah. and, you will, and it's on demand. So those people are looking for that content and they're mm -hmm. gonna find it and they're gonna engage at a way higher rate there than anywhere else probably yeah. you can find. So yeah. that's, the, that's the benefit for sure. What's the coolest product you've ever seen come out of CES? I was able to do a self-driving car demo. And so I sat in the back seat Whoa. and took a video of an empty front seat as this car drove me around a couple miles of Las Vegas. I think they knew on one hand that that would be really impressive to people, but on the other hand, they can get these genuine reactions of like, what will people really think? You don't get those reactions in your lab from just testing it, you know? That's what we decided to do. So two years ago, we, we kind of kind of surprised everybody. People were like, why is a consumer products company coming here. We were joking around a little bit about or talking about the Charmin lab. This problem we were trying to solve was nobody wants to ever run out of toilet paper. That's so that's that's back to this nuance. That's the insight in the nuance. And what we did introduce was Freedom Roll. Freedom Roll is the equivalent of 24 rolls in one. So it's this giant roll. It's like this big. We had thought people aren't going to buy this thing. Are they really going to do it? But we were shocked. People love it because it's back to this. We knew what the consumer wanted, which is you never want to run out. I mean, if there's any product you want to have a good relationship with, it's your Charmin and your Bounty. So uh, <laughs> but as long as they're doing a good job, I think a lot of people will be happy. I got to get you the Oral-B IO product. It's not a self-driving car, but I think you're going to be blown away by it when you get to try it. Well, thanks, Marquez, for spending time with me. It was just a great conversation about, about life, about goodness, about you know, how you can take everyday things and, and just, just make them interesting and make them meaningful and, and do it in such a way that, is, that is, is authentic. Thanks for chatting with me, Mark. It's been a lot of fun. I, every time I get to have a conversation with someone who has a different perspective on not just tech, but the world, uh, it's pretty valuable. Thanks for uh, watching it. And uh, this has been Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD. Mm -hmm.